Yeah. Okay, I'm going to call the meeting to order. I acknowledge that the district of Tofino operates within the territories of Tolkien First Nation. And notice to the attendees that the meeting is being video recorded and will be published on the district of Tofino YouTube <coughs> ch channel. Another motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. All those in favour? None opposed. Motion carried. Adoption of the minutes. Minutes of the committee of the whole meeting held February the 3rd, 2020. No adoption. Second. All those in favour? None opposed. Motion carried. Minutes of the special committee of the whole meeting held March the 3rd, 2020. Move adoption. Second. All those in favour? No opposed. Motion carried. And no public comments on the agenda. No delegations. Any correspondence? Police? No. No. Okay, we'll go straight to the verbal report on the permissive tax exemption policy. We'll have to do the Aaron Rodgers thing. Yeah, exactly. it's trout. I know. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'll uh, be presenting tonight on the permissive tax exemption policy. Um, this is timely, as I mentioned in one of the previous special budget meetings, because um, this is the year when the the last term of permissive tax exemptions expires. So we need to consider what tax exemptions look like for the years 2021 and for four years thereafter. So I'm, I, I'm really sorry. To, I'm really sorry to interrupt. I, okay. Is there a way to get to a little closer to the mic? Sorry, Nyla. Maybe. Can we put it like a, a table? Or How's that? Is that better? Worse? Not really, but I'll, I'll, I'll strain to hear. Okay. I may interject just to ask for clarification if I can't hear something. So, yeah, okay. So, can I just, the, the rules for electronic participation is, is that um, you'd be able to, to, to hear what's going on. So, it's pretty important that you'd be able to hear what's going on. Um, I don't. So let's, um, Niall will try and speak up. And I can speak louder. Yeah. I wasn't speaking that loudly. Is that better? That's better for Mar me. Oh, Mar yes, sir. Or I can hear it. Marginally better. It's okay. I'll, I'll try really hard. If I can't hear, I'll just let you know. Okay. Okay, so this evening I'll be discussing the permissive tax exemption policy, and this is timely because the exemption term is ending in 2020, and we will be considering potentially a new four-year exemption period beginning with the taxation year 2021. Applications based on the current policy are due July 15th, so we will need to make a decision on this policy and how the applications will, will look before we, um, within the next month or, or six weeks or so. So I'll just provide an overview of what the presentation will look like. I'll go over the current policy and I'm not going to go over it section by section. I've highlighted some areas that I felt were important and then we can pause after that. If there's areas of the policy that I did not bring forward and council wishes to discuss, we can do that as well. Um, so I highlighted areas like the main objectives for the policy, um, the priorities that council have out, has outlined in the policy. This is a new council looking at this policy. The previous council approved exemptions for a four-year term, and we didn't want the exemptions to come forward too soon, so we allowed one year into the council term before considering exemptions with, the, with this council. Uh, so I will go over what the 2017 to 2020 exemptions look like in terms of whether they met the maximum level, and I, I can tell you now that for the four years they did not, but I'll show you what the numbers look like. And we'll talk about the current exempted properties and the current categories that we offer exemptions under. 
And then we'll talk about how we want the policy to look going forward, if Council wishes to make any changes, what, um, what current issues that are arising and how that will impact the exemption as it's set out currently. I would like to recommend some reporting requirements on an annual basis. We currently don't have any, um, but in order to better suit the objectives and make sure we're meeting those objectives and priorities of Council, I want to see some annual reporting requirements. Um, currently, we don't report... Sorry, Nyla, I missed, I missed that last uh, little bit there. So I will be looking at imposing some reporting requirements or recommending some reporting requirements in um, in the new policy or amendments to the current policy and currently we don't have any reporting requirements on an annual basis or midterm throughout the four-year exemption period but I will be looking at regularly reporting out to council um, with the with more staffing resources in the department I think that that's more possible going going forward um, that will give Council an opportunity to make sure that priorities and objectives are still being met with respect to the current policy and whether they would like that exemption to continue for the full four-year term. Um, we'll have a discussion today about the exemption limit to make sure that's still well suited to where we're at and what the categories currently are and how we want them to look going forward. So next slide, current policy. So currently not-for-profit organizations that provide services which council considers are directly related to the purposes of the organization are, are, are approved. And that is set out in legislation and that is allowable um, <coughs> under the community charter. So we look at exemptions or organizations and services that provide a community benefit that are complementary extensions of municipal services. So it would be a service that the municipality would offer if the organization did not and that the burden resulting from the exemption is a justifiable expense to the taxpayers of Tofino. Because mm -hmm. essentially, if one property is not paying, then the other taxpayers of Tofino are paying for that service to be offered to the community. And exemptions are at the sole discretion of council permissive tax exemptions. Next slide. So an exemption, as per the current policy, will not be given favorable consideration where the organization has made no effort to obtain other sources of funding. And so we check that um, by way of the organization submitting their financial statements with their application and we review that. I would like to amend the policy to ensure that annual financial statements are received so we can make sure that that is, that is checked on an annual basis. The organization, if the organization does not make use of volunteers, then it will not be given favorable consideration either. Exemptions are based on the principal use of the applicant property, not on the charitable service of the organization as a whole. And the exemption may apply to all of the property or to just land or to just improvements or both. Next slide. Exemption limits. So, this is a, a, a little bit, this was difficult to draft up in the policy and difficult to articulate to council, so I'll just go through this slowly and feel free I can, to stop me as I, as I go through it, I can go back. So to, total permissive tax exemptions that are approved in the current year for the following taxation year can't exceed 2% of the current year's total budgeted municipal taxes. So what that is saying is we use current year data, current year assessment values, tax rates, and the budget to determine what exemptions will look like for the following year. And the reason why we do that is because those are, that's the data that we have available to us. We don't know what the assessment values and what the tax rates will look like for the, tax year, for the taxation year where, where the property will be exempted. So we need to use current year's data to set an exemption limit. That has worked really well over the last four years and I'm comfortable with continuing with that method. Um, but we do need to discuss whether 2% is, 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 like, is the right percentage and I have some, some numbers to put to that a bit later. So we'll, we'll come back to that. Is that our bylaw or provincial, the 2% number? That's um, by, as per our policy, yeah. And we also established it in our permissive tax exemption bylaw. Um, so permissive, exempt, permissive exemptions will be proportionately reduced if the max if the um, 
if the limit is, is met. We haven't had to do that yet. But any properties that are held by the district will receive a 100% exemption first, and then proportionately all other properties will be reduced. So council has the ability to reduce the proportionate value of an exemption for any applicant property in any category. We left the policy quite flexible, and council can approve less than the maximum exemption available. So we have our over overarching permissive tax exemption policy, and then we have the bylaw that establishes which properties and which portion of assessment value is going to be land or improvements is going to be exempt. And council can make a decision to modify the language in that bylaw with the flexibility of the policy to indicate what will actually be exempt from year to year or for the four year term which the policy allows us to put in place. Next slide. So tax exemptions under this section, which is 224 of the Community Charter, um, will be considered every four years during the second year of each council term. And I explained that earlier, um, that it just made more sense to, to wait a year before they were reviewed by a council. Applications must be received by July 15th in each applicable year for the exemptions that begin in the subsequent taxation year. All land or improvements that are held by the district, as I mentioned a moment ago, receive a 100% exemption before all others will be proportionately reduced if the exemption limit is met. And we haven't seen that in the last four years. So next slide. So that's it. That concludes my review of the current policy. And I can either pause there if there was something that council read in the current policy that would like to be discussed right now, or I can wait and come back to that later. Okay, so moving on to the 2017 to 2020 permissive tax exemptions. So I have the four years in which we exempted, and I have an estimate for the following year, for 2021. In the next column, I have the exemption values and then the exemption limit in the last column. So it's the estimated exemption value that we have in the center column, which we compared against the actual exemption limit. Um, and so in, for all four years, we did not exceed that limit, and it worked really well for the last four years. And so that gives council an idea what, what the value of total exemptions were for going back to 2017. For 2021, and this was, this was difficult to estimate, and it's gonna look quite a bit different when we establish the tax rates for this year. I don't have 2020 tax rates yet because I don't have the other requisition agencies. So we use 2020 assessment value and 2019 tax rates. So that's gonna look a little bit different. So I just, I put a star beside that because that number will change. Um, but if we were to use that data that we have available right now, the exemption value would be over, just over 100,000 at 108,000. <coughs> and the exemption limit would be 101,000. I do, based on the draft tax rates that we have right now, just looking at municipal taxes only, the rates have come down a little bit. So while exemption value or assessment values have gone up, tax rates have gone down a little bit. I imagine we may be okay with the exemption limit set where it's at, but I, I'm not too sure. Okay, so next slide. These are the properties that we currently exempt and they have remained consistent from, from term to term, from year to year. Uh, we have the TELUS Communications property, which is a piece of property held by the district, um, which is the parklet over at the corner of 2nd and Neal. Um, the theater next door, we have the Legion. Um, the General Hospital Foundation, and I just wanna talk about that one for a moment. When, in 2017, that was before the helipad was in place, so a portion of that property is now occupied by the helipad. Um, there was a lease agreement in place, um, or an agreement to build um, special needs and supportive housing, and that agreement is no longer in place, but a portion of that property is used for, for the purposes of the hospital for the helipad. And so uh, we, don't, we don't have a category where a permissive tax exemption would fit under currently, and so we need to consider that when we're modifying this policy, depending on what council would like to do with that, with that, with that parcel. Tofino Salmon Enhancement Society, that has been exempt for many years, and that's the building that's um, close to the water treatment plant. And the Tourism Tofino um, Information Center is on there. 
And then the two churches are on there with respect to land only. The buildings or the improvements receive a statutory exemption. And the Tofino, Tofino Senior Citizens Housing Society, that was a midterm application that came in and it was exempt for the last two years, I believe, 2018 and 2019. I have not had any correspondence with any of these applicants to date, but they will be expecting an application package to go out shortly. Um, and I, I haven't received any notification on whether the applicants are still interested in applying for exemption or if there are others I haven't heard. So just to remind council, or for those of you that don't know, we don't advertise for, for exemptions. It is, it is available and it is a process that is put in place, but we don't necessarily do a call for applications like we will do for, for other things. Okay. So these are the current evaluation categories. So when, when an applicant is interested in applying for a permissive tax exemption, they have to meet the definition of one of these categories. And so I've just listed um, the number of properties that we have under each of these categories. So we currently have exemptions under arts, culture, and heritage facilities, the fish hatchery, the legion, um, two places of worship, one special needs and supportive housing. I put a star beside that because that is the Tofino General Hospital Foundation property, and then the visit and visitor information services. So when we are considering changes to the policy, whether it's exemption limit or evaluation categories, we want to, to keep in mind what I mentioned in the earlier slide, which is we want to provide exemptions to organizations that are providing, um, that are directly related to the purposes of the organization. Um, those, those points that I mentioned earlier were objectives and priorities that council felt were important to include in the policy at that time. So I encourage us to revisit that language and make sure we want to keep that language when considering the applications for the next for the next four years. Hi, right. could you could you say that again? That last uh, uh, couple sentences. Okay. Um, yes. So we can't remember what I said. Oh yes. So we when we're having a look at the categories and the exemption limit that we want to include in the policy or, or keep in the policy, uh, we want to make sure that we are considering exemptions that are directly related to the purposes of the organization and those points I mentioned earlier, which are the objectives that council felt were important at the time of adopting the policy. Um, so providing a community of be benefit, a complementary extension of municipal services, and making sure that's a justifiable expense to the other taxpayers of Tofino. So we want to keep coming back to that and making sure um, throughout the application process and throughout the policy development or amendments today that we're discussing that those, those still work for Council and that's still, that's still making sense and we want to keep that language in the policy. It's a bit different. Thank you. Okay, so next slide. Um, so, we, I mentioned earlier that I would like to include some reporting requirements this year and we haven't, financial services hasn't been great about reporting back out midterm on the exemptions and we need to, we need to do more of that. Um, council would, should be seeing what annual financial statements look like, um, whether, whether the exemption that is being offered is still meeting the objectives of the policy. And so staff will be bringing that, that back to council, going over an annual questionnaire that I would like to give out to, those, to the applicants and making sure that they're meeting all the requirements in the policy, basically like a checklist, and that will be reported out to council to make sure that's, that's well aligned with the policy that's in place. Um, I would like council to have a look and reconsider the exemption limit and due to increasing assessment values, increasing taxes over the next five years, with, with more exemptions <coughs> potentially related to affordable housing, this will mean that the, if the limit remains the same and taxes go up, likely we won't reach that limit. So we wanna make sure that 2% is okay because whatever exemptions we offer, the other taxpayers will be affording that. So we do have, I am in conversation with the Tofino Housing Corporation discussing permissive tax exemptions and how that may work for affordable housing. 
that will all come back to council. Just because it is an evaluation category, it doesn't mean it will receive an automatic exemption. Council will make that decision. And with the current wording in the policy, council has the ability to decide at what level or what amount the exemption will be allowable for. I would today also like to have a closer look at the categories that we have in place and make sure we're meeting all the, all the requirements or that council is satisfied with the evaluation categories and perhaps we may need to modify some of them or review some of the definitions. So that completes my verbal report and my review of the, of the policy. I can go back to any slides and we can go back and have points of discussion. I'm open to suggestions on how to tackle this. Thank you. Any questions for Nala? Well, Scott, um, not all municipalities give permissive tax exemptions, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. When I say not all, is that the majority or? Well, I haven't, I haven't done a review or, or taken count, but I have had conversations with some that offer and, and some that don't, so I, I couldn't give you a number. Anyone else? Tom? Tom? I don't have questions for Nyla, I thought. <laughs> two, things, two things I wanted to bring up okay. um, for people's opinions, and that is um, around um, the eligibility of a portion of property that is receiving a tax exemption but is, in, is then leased in turn by the organization that owns it. So I'll use the hospital foundation as an example. So they are now leasing a portion of the land to the province for the helipad. And I don't know what rate, if it's a market rate or, or uh, a lower than that. And the question I would ask is, does that meet our test in terms of asking the rest of the residents and businesses in Tofino to pay for that portion of land when they are also receiving the lease income for it, which in itself is also um, money that's being collected from taxpayers in British Columbia. <clears throat> so I think there's an argument to say yes certainly we support the cause of the Tofino Hospital Foundation and therefore we would we would permit that and but I I would just ask is that is there a principle of fairness that perhaps um, isn't being met in this sense of other people who are receiving um, exemptions or, or what we're asking so it's a question and then the other question would be around a uh, charity or a nonprofit that's receiving a tax exemption and then is also eligible to apply for council grants or other forms of property tax subsidy. Are we okay with that as well? Um, or does it feel like double dipping? In the sense that there are some municipalities that don't, like they will give a permissive tax exemption but then that removes you from being eligible to um, apply for a council grant or a grant in aid because you have already effectively received, a, you are effectively receiving a grant in a, in a sense, you are receiving a subsidy. So those were the two things I wanted to ask or bring up and see what people thought. Do you have any answers for them? I don't have any comments on that. I don't know. I, I, I have seen that Grants are not allowable if you do get a permissive tax exemption, and that would be very easy to add into the policy if council is interested. Can you say that again, Nyla, please? I don't have any comments on, uh, with respect to the mayor's comments, other than I have seen that grants are not allowable if, if a applicant receives a permissive tax exemption. Um, do you have any current examples just so I can wrap my head around what that might look like? With the grant side or with the... the both. The, if somebody, <coughs> if there is an organization presently that has received a, a council grant uh, or and receives a permissive tax exemption as well. Sure. Several of the organizations that have, that do receive permissive tax exemptions over the years have successfully applied for council grants. And again, I'm not, I'm not expressing an opinion yet. I'm just, I'm asking the question, does this matter? 
Um, so, for example, the Clackamas Sound Community Theater, the Canadian, their Legion, the Hospital Foundation. I can't remember off the top of my head whether the um, Salmon Enhancement Society has applied for money through a council grant before. In the past, but, before, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I, what you know, what I'm asking is, is it is it fair to then to have other organizations, you know, not able to access taxpayer subsidy because one organization is kind of getting it twice. And I, you know, I, I don't know how, um, well, like I said, there are some municipalities that just make them ineligible. And so you sort of have to make your decision, I guess, as an organization. And whether you're going to apply for a tax exemption and then make yourself ineligible for a council grant. Or, you know, for many, I think the val it doesn't show the actual taxes waived over the years. Do you have a graph or a chart that shows that? I don't have Okay. That. Can I uh, say something quick? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to butt in. I can't tell who's got their hand up or not. So uh, I do. I, I'm just wondering about uh, just to give you context. Uh, a few years ago, I had an idea to get kids to do something, so we applied for a arts and culture grant. Now I don't know if that's considered a council grant. It was certainly a municipal grant, uh, and I approached the Anglican Church to to be the uh, to be the uh, charity that would support us, so we work together. So they basically uh, were the vehicle through which we could access the grant. So I'm just wondering, uh, not that that's a big deal, but I know a lot of charities or nonprofits do that sort of thing where they, they partner with arts and culture uh, groups or individuals to access grants. And I'm just wondering if that would be in jeopardy uh, that's not a big deal, just wondering. That's not what I'm getting at. It would be rather the Anglican Church itself apply for a grant. There's many people who apply, or organizations apply for grants, and then they conduct events all over the place, and I don't think the district has ever stuck its nose in what their rental arrangements or, or anything are. But that's not what I was getting at. Okay. Okay, yeah. In my terms, uh, when an organization applied for a grant, a grant it's being for a specific project. It's not being the church, just for I the church. Think I got it's been some project that the church is sponsoring. Mm -hmm. Certainly, yeah. the time I've been here. So the the arts and culture grant policy allows individuals as long as they're sponsored by an organization. So the language could be specific in the policy to not allow grants from directly from organizations, but that sponsorships would be allowable. Well, I'm, I'm going to throw it out there. I think with the tax increases everybody's facing this year, I'm not a big fan of permissive tax exemptions. Period. Yeah. I mean, I think when ta you know, hopefully times improve. I think that's the time to reconsider them. But I think it's now is the time when we should be phasing them out. I think phase is an important word. Yeah, and I wouldn't say, uh, you know, just pull the rug out, but maybe they should be gone by the end of the next four year term. So everybody's got some notice. Can I ask what that important word was? I missed it. Phase. So, for example, if right now we're allowing permissive tax exemptions up to 2%, we could take a staged approach, like we could go. I don't know, we could just knock it back a, a half percent for four years type thing till the point where it's essentially zero. That makes sense. I thought you could save and it didn't make sense. Yeah. I'm open to discussing mm -hmm. it. I, it's obviously not going to be popular and um, and some it'll be a much harder for some well, than it will be for others yeah. and I don't know what the amounts are. Yeah. But. I, I, I certainly understand the, the sentiments, Councilor McMaster. I just initially, I, I have some difficulties in some of the organizations that this this could be, you know, very difficult for those organizations, and and I understand uh, 
where you're coming from in the next four years, we are looking at some significant tax increases. And, and uh, you know, I was curious to see what the amount um, of, the, of the exemptions have been over the last four years um, to get a, a sense of what that means into the overall picture of, of our revenues. Um, it would help me in, in a way, but uh, initially, um, I, I'm just, I, I would be on uh, my initial sentiment, I would have to be convinced more um, that this was the right move at this time. I bet it would be very popular with the vast majority of the taxpayers. Oh, there's no doubt. No. Well, <laughs> maybe. I mean, honestly, I, I just want to caution us all. Like, I think it has to be a very principle-driven discussion here because just like we saw with our migrants the other day, it's tough when we have personal opinions about different organizations and our hearts are in some and not in others. And so I think we have to be... Um, we have to be careful and sensitive in the way we talk about it. So we're going to pull up the annual report from 2018, oh, which will have what the 2018 exemptions were, and that may help inform the discussion. That would be super. Just take a moment. And a nice picture in yes. the end time. <laughs> With no skiers. No. Uh, just a, just to, I, I'm, I'm, there's a lot of dead, uh, dead air time for me here, so I'm just making sure uh, I'm getting it all. But are we, just, just to be clear, are we being asked, we're not being asked today to decide uh, uh, the future of this tax exemption policy, are we? I, so what I'm, the purpose of today's presentation is to bring the policy forward to remind council what's included in the current policy and discuss some areas of the policy that may require amendment. I don't have specific recommendations today on what to amend. I just think it's important before we go into, you know, up to another four year term of exemptions that council have a look at the objectives set out in the policy and the limits set out in the policy and perhaps reporting requirements, which is actually my only recommendation is to establish some reporting requirements on an annual basis. Thanks, Nyla. Yes. Um, so the one that says Tofino Long Beach Chamber of Commerce is actually now the Destin yes. Nation Management Organization. Yeah. <coughs> okay, so that brings up one other thing then, I think, in looking at this list, which is to remind ourselves that some of these properties are owned by the district and are leased to entities, which they are paying a lease fee for. Like, we are charging a lease to Tourism Tofino, and some of them we are not charging a lease to, so we don't charge a, we don't charge the theater for the theater next door so by removing the tax exemption let's just play out what Duncan's suggesting then we're asking some organizations to pay twice and others to pay once which could be fine so long as I think the policy is clear like how why and how you pick mm -hmm. type that you're well I guess in the case of removing it you don't really have a policy at all <laughs> your policy is just none but when you're establishing the lease and and you know, so I guess what I'm saying is why, be, let's be clear, why would the theater not be charged at least, but tourism you know, would be charged at least? Fee. I don't, I'm not asking for yeah. that question to be answered right now. I'm just saying I want to be clear. I, <coughs> uh, just in uh, response to Mayor Osborne, when talking about driving this from a principal base, and I understand some of the issues uh, encountered with the RMI process, Duly, duly noted. Um, I, I'll go back to the the policy rationale then that uh, that we have, which is uh, number three uh, policy rationale and the intent of the policy and associated evaluation criteria is to identify the services and organizations which provide a community benefit and are complementary extensions of municipal services, and for which the burden resulting from the exemption is a justifiable expense to the taxpayer to Fino. 
So that's why I, I would reiterate that this could be, and I think some of these organizations, it, it could be said, do provide a, 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 a valuable community service. And I don't want to pick and choose which ones, of course, um, at this point. But from a rationale standpoint, um, I do see that some of those organizations that are providing that complementary uh, would, be, would be very much burdened by, by the exemption being removed. And that's where I would, I would draw my, my opinions from based on that. I'm wondering, do, does the application process have them give any of those criteria or justify their, their community contribution? Yeah, so the application does use language from the policy and ask questions to make sure they're meeting their requirements set out in the policy. Um, and if an applicant is not able to do that, then that's articulated to council at the time of, of council considering the exemption. Because even though they're I, I'd like to hear more of the... Uh, Excuse me, someone speaking, Dan. Pardon me? Someone Go ahead, speaking. Dan. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dan. I couldn't hear you. I'm giving you the floor. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. Sorry, I, I can't tell if you were thinking. Uh, I would like to hear more about the sort of an equitable, uh, you know, looking at these things. I find it uh, difficult to put Clay Clut Sound Community Theater in the same uh, category as, uh, say, Tourism Tofino. Uh, it seems like the, there's, you know, I, I think I should reiterate what Councillor Steer says that some of these organizations are, are certainly, uh, you know, if they were to pay tax uh, all of a sudden for the first time, it would be quite a burden. And uh, um, maybe some other organizations not so much of a burden. So I think it, uh, I would really like to see, uh, uh, you know, this fleshed out uh, a little more. Councillor McQuaid. Sorry, Councillor Lott, can I ask you a question? Yes, can you, you can. I can hear you well. Great. Shocking. <laughs> um, what do you mean by fleshed out a little bit more? Because uh, while I understand both your and Councillor Steer's intuition that it would provide, it would prove some burden more than others, I can also say that from a community standpoint, some people would probably see some of these as more valuable than others, and, and they may not be what you expect. For example, Tourism Tofino as a small business owner might seem more attractive than the Salmon Enhancement Society. So I, I think what we're, we can't look at it like from an anecdotal analysis or how it is important to me or important to you, because I think then, once again, we fall under into the same trap that we did with the RMI grants and we need to have a clear strong decisive policy that is adhered to and and so when you say you I need it fleshed out a little bit more what what are you looking to have what what spaces are you looking to have filled in well just for instance I think uh, Mayor Osborne noted that uh, Tofino leases uh, the land to or to tourism to Fino. Uh, and there's also a uh, land, uh, historical land deal with Clayco Town Community Theater. So what are the, you know, what's the difference there? Like how, how, do that, how does that make uh, things change? How does it enter into the picture? The same with the Fino General Hospital, you know, are they leasing? It's just, just trying to think about what was already uh, talked about and, you know, I know the history of Clay Court Town Community Theater, uh, it's fairly complex. Uh, it may not be in a similar vein as the history, you know, the, the arrangements with Tours of Tofino. That, that's all I was saying. I just, I just wanted to, to think about this a little more and, and have a look at it and, and have a very clear, I guess we already have a, a clear um, policy, uh, but if we're reducing things or getting rid of uh, tax exemptions, I think it's, I'd just like to know very clearly why and, and what
what for. That's all. Mm. Okay, thanks for the clarification. This is um, something that we haven't really sought much uh, feedback in our financial uh, whatever presentations to the public. And for many of these organizations, I think they, they reach out much farther than the organization in terms of community support. So um, um, I, I'm not going to pick any specific examples, but I, I could see that there would be broad community support for, for keeping a lot of them. And if we are going to phase them out, then I think we, we owe it to the public to give it the same sort of treatment as all the other stuff we've done in our financial planning and our budgeting over those years. So uh, it, I think it's hard to decide in this first year, since we've mo done most of our feedback already, to, to plan for the next four years when this hasn't gone out to the public. Because, um, the, you know, the hospital association widely supported. I think the legions widely supported. Lots of community things have happened there. I, I could pick any, say that about just about all of them. I, I, maybe the the mini park. It's kind of isolated, and in, in, you know, it's not an organization. But yeah, that's my comment. But I do appreciate that I think we have to take a really uh, hard look at, at the, the taxation situation. Yeah. Councillor Chalmers, do you have anything to say? Um, no, I, I'm, I'm open to discussing it. I, uh, I do agree. Um, with what Councillor Anderson just said, um, you know, looking looking at what it's going to look like, uh, um, really understanding why we're looking at it, um, if it just helps to balance the budget, if you know, I, I yeah, I'm, I'm I'm open to looking at it more. At this point. The communities that don't offer tax exemptions, is there anything in common with them? Are they sort of all big industries or things like that? Or they I'd have to look at that again, if I could get back to you on that. Um, I do notice that not all mi municipalities that do offer exemptions don't always offer exemptions for the land only of places of worship. That's not entirely common. Um, either our municipalities that do offer the land, but some only offer the, the improvements and the statutory part of the exemption. I noticed that as a common theme. Um, yeah, that's, that's all. I have some other I comments. I have a question. Did, did, Madam, did you pull up a, a list? I think I kind of thought it was going back to the current exemption properties, but did you guys have something up there that I can't see? Yeah. Yes, in the 2018 <laughs> annual report, there's a list of the exempted properties for that year. So every annual report, we have to list them out and what the value of the taxation would have been okay. had that property paid. And so that's what we have up on the screen now. Okay, thanks. I'll look that up. So Nyla, you've got a few comments? Yeah. So I, I know we started having this conversation because of Councillor McMaster's comment on um, about whether to offer or whether or not to offer. And I think um, for the purposes of the policy, we, we are focusing a little bit too much on the applicant properties. And so just to bring this back out a little bit and remind council that the policy does have a lot of flexible language. While we set the limit, limit at 2% total of, of total budgeted municipal taxes, we don't have to offer that amount. So if there's some concern about continuing to offer that value, and uh, we have some time to consider that with the current language in the policy. Um, perhaps today, which may be a bit more achievable, is to revisit the policy objectives and also have a look at the categories to make sure the categories and the definitions are well suited to Council's priorities currently. 
Um, with the with the affordable housing de development and the transfer of Sharp Road, we will see an application this year coming from the Tapina Housing Corporation. So that is something to consider when looking at all the other categories. We may see other applications in some of the other categories that council may have to consider as well on top of the regular applicants that we that we normally see. So we shouldn't rule that out either and just focus on the ones that we have been exempting. So I don't know if that's helpful at all. But. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think it would be. I think it's really important to know how the um, affordable housing over the whole period, over the whole four years might affect us. We don't know for sure, yeah. but that could easily, um, you know, start getting up there really fast. Mm -hmm. Yes, but currently with no development, the property is assessed quite low, um, but as we see development, it's going to change significantly over a four year term. So we probably be looking at with the, the parcel on its own about $7,000. Um, but th that's just a rough estimate without having the tax rates drafted currently. So that's that's what we would be looking at for 2020 or 2021. Sorry, potentially it, unless there was development. So just if there was a, a, a vacant parcel. So one of the suggestions was um, was to look at the, the evaluation categories, and, and, and I see that there are there are nine. Um, it, um, I, I don't know if you have the information, but it, it might be helpful for some of us that weren't involved in um, uh, if because I, I look at some and I, and I would wonder the history of how how we came um, to such you know I mean all, all of them, I mean some of them are fairly straightforward, but how how we you know fish house how we come up for, um, you know, visitor information center, um, you know, how, how we come up with these categories and historically why those were chosen as opposed to, to others. And um, because if we start trying to evaluate these and add more, subtract some, it, 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 there, there may be something that I don't understand about why we would give a, a, a you know, a tax exemption to a visitor information service center, for example, and it, it, there may be something there that I, I, that I just don't know. Sure. So this policy was adopted in 2016 before we went into the 2017 exemptions. And at that time, in the previous policy, we didn't have categories at all. So as a starting point, we had a look at the, the applicants that we would regularly see for, for permissive tax exemptions. And we, would, we kind of formulated categories based on that. And then we also looked at comparison policies of other municipalities and what types of categories they might offer. Um, so I brought those suggestions to council and we had that discussion and these are the, the categories that, that came out in the policy. Um, so the, previously the visitor centre was applied for under the chamber and so we added in that very specific uh, definition to meet our current needs and what we have indicated there is that the, the definition is very specific, I'm not, not sure if you noticed, but it has to be it would be a visitor information service that would be under agreement with the District of Tofino to receive the municipal and regional district tax. So that if, if that was no longer tourism Tofino, then that exemption would no longer be allowed, but it would be with whoever we had the agreement with. So the, the definition is quite specific there and catered to one applicant and one organization. So I don't know if that's helpful at all. I know um, Mayor Osborne, you were there too, so I don't know if you wanted to add anything or Councillor McMaster. As for some of the other ones, it's just historical, I think, which kind of begs the question, what is the rationale? And there may not be written or established, but there is in our minds, and or some people's minds. <laughs> So what are you looking for from us today? Well, if Council is comfortable with the categories as they are, then we'll leave them as is. And if Council is comfortable with the objectives and the language of, of the policy and the flexibility within the policy and the exemption limit, then I will leave all of that as is. Um, the application will remain more or less the same, but I would like to add a reporting requirement 
which I would, which I'd like to add that language into the policy that the applicants are required to submit a report by such and such a date. And I, I don't know what that date will be right now, but I can bring that amendment back to council um, to consider before the applications go out. And then what I would do is create a, a checklist essentially that would go out on an annual basis and a requirement to submit the annual financial statements. And I keep that checklist and the app, just like the application separate from the policy so we can make modifications to it administratively if we needed to. Well, um, you know, if we were to take this suggestion um, and apply to this specific, the evaluation categories that we have and, and, and apply the, the policy rationale to each of one of those, it may help in a sense, um, and then look at the 2% the, the as well uh, to address some of the concerns that I think Councillor Master has brought up in terms of our, the, the ability to generate revenue uh, from taxation and where it might be applicable and it might also help um, uh, in, in a sense to massage kind of maybe my fears um, that certain organizations may, <coughs> based on, on the rationale, may suffer um, incalculable uh, loss in not only to themselves but to the community, the services that they're providing. Um, and it may be a, a subjective to a certain degree, but I think if we, if we, if we, if we use that policy rationale to help guide us in that discussion, uh, we may, um, we may or may not. Uh, to extend the conference for 15 minutes, press one. If, if. If the rest of council would find that too burdensome, I, I would, I would withdraw the suggestion, but. Sorry, what exactly is the suggestion? That we use the policy rationale to look at the evaluation categories and we may want to remove some of those evaluation categories, or maybe add, I don't know, um, to this list. Because it was a suggestion that I thought had some value to it, and, and I thought it might help to address some of the concerns around are we giving uh, exemptions um, where the organizations may not be um, providing, and, and this is where the subjective part comes in, and I understand that, but trying to use that policy rationale. What I'm trying to say is it might help either eliminate some of those categories, um, and hence those revenues would then be uh, back to the, to the district by eliminating those categories, uh, which may uh, help in the, in what Councillor McMaster had brought forward in terms of getting rid of all of them because we want to bring in the revenues from all of these categories. But maybe I'm just thinking maybe it's not necessary. And we can apply to that 2%. We can have a discussion one way or the other. If we keep everything the same, I don't, uh, I'm, maybe we're missing the whole point of the exercise. Or maybe I'm missing the whole point of the exercise. I don't have an issue with the categories, I just have an issue with the principle and if people are always relying on a tax exemption, they'll never be in stand up to expect it every year. Sorry, Councillor uh, McMaster, can you say that uh, again? Sorry, no. that last <laughs> <please>. <laughs> I'm saying that if, if you expect to take a tax exemption every year, you'll never learn to manage without it, basically. Thank you. Which is not unlike what we've said before in council grants and RMI grants and other types of grants where it, when an organization comes year after year and applies for the same thing for the same amount, it, it gets into this kind of expectation category and we've expressed discomfort with that before too. So it's fine if it fits the principles and the policy objectives, but once it steps outside of that, it's not. I think we should leave everything, with the exception of requiring the annual reporting, that for now we should leave everything exactly the same. However, I think that, I think Councillor Anderson brings up a really good point, which is that we did not talk to the public about this in our two 
bigger community engagements. And so to make some changes now um, for this year would be pretty unfair because the increases to these organizations are worse than the increases that the average taxpayer property owner in, T in Tofino is going to face this year anyways. So I think that's unfair. So what we can say, however, is that, you know, council is having a discussion about the balance between um, supporting these community uses of property or community benefits of these uses of property uh, and how much everybody else should be, you know, contributing towards that or not. And that we actually ask our staff to incorporate that into next year's budget consultations to see, get some feedback about uh, reducing maybe the overall amount, like from two to 1.5 or one or whatever. Uh, and we'll hear from the organizations that are currently benefiting. And we will also hear from the other people who feel that they would benefit by seeing some of these, some of this property not um, granted a permissive or full permissive tax exemption. There'll be no perfect path forward. <laughs> but, no, okay. I agree with that. I, I think we do need more public input. But I think we should be putting it, getting it, this subject out there for discussion sometime. Councillor McCoy. I think that Nyla's intuition about reporting is also really important for any further decisions to make because if we are looking critically at the, the bigger financial picture for these um, organizations, then having an idea what either a stepped a step down in, in support looks like on, on the impact. Well, I, I just think that that's a little bit more fair. I'm also interested to know, you know, if you are leasing a part of your operation, like where, where does that land you? Where does it land us? Because frankly, that was the thing that I, I felt that I heard that gave me the most pause about this um, was the, you know, general hospital piece and, and leasing and, and how do you, how do you balance like income and, and, um, exemption and how we can do that well critically and thoughtfully so i think um, having that reporting piece is something that i don't think we should be making any decisions without that and public consultation in my opinion yeah. Done. i get sorry May I mm -hmm. um the educational facilities do, mm -hmm. that doesn't apply to the school no. right but, so we don't have any in that category at this point we don't at the time of considering the policy we were setting aside funds for higher learning initiatives yeah. and I think that's where that definition came about when you say you want an annual reporting and I know some of these organizations have different financial years yes is that going to be a complication for you it, sh it should be okay for um, to, to report out to council before October 31st of the year or well before that a couple months before that to consider exemptions for the following year is going to be possible I think based on we'll just get the most recent year end of all the organizations and bring it back to council before before July 15th of every year and we'll just we'll choose the the most applicable year and I'm not concerned and the the report will make very very standard and easy to use which will just be a checklist and in a one-page document and then we can use that to re report out to council and we don't have to approve exemptions for a four-year term either the policy is flexible for one t up to four years um, so if we want to get some consultation feedback and come back and, and see what that looks like in a year's time we'd certainly be able to do that Um, does the li li the library benefit from any tax exemptions, or is it, I, I believe, the bottom half of the Legion doesn't get the tax exemption or something like that? Or does the whole... I, I believe that is that is a statutory exemption. For the whole building? Library. For the portion where the library is similar to the school, similar to the hospital, institutional, I'm fairly certain I, I'm going to have to look at that. Yeah, I, I, yeah I, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, we've maybe we've had yeah. different situations where the 
part of the Legion has been occupied by a commercial enterprise. That oh yes, there was a time when it was, yeah. Library, which yeah. are more arguably a community benefit. Yeah. Um, so that's it's been a while since I've looked at it. Yeah, I need to get back so to that's a that. detail. Yeah. Probably should be captured too. Sure. We might want to remove educational facilities if, depending on where our educational and priorities lie. Yeah. If they're still the same. So uh, two years ago, a mayor of another resort municipality emailed us all with questions about permissive tax exemptions, and I just took a quick look at the email chain that ensued after that. And if there's one thing I can say that comes very clear from about eight different mayors weighing in, is that clawing back is is very difficult especially when an exemption has been long-standing and that the better bet is to slowly wean it down by just remove, you know, going to 1.755 or something mm -hmm. like that than it would be to, re to fiddle with the criteria and the, and the thing that would exempt some and not others and mm -hmm. so just offering that right now. <laughs> and maybe that's the conversation to have with the community is what does this look like if it, if it slowly um, over time reduces. Yeah. And that's what, that's, excuse me, that's why I like, you know, if times are good, then you mm -hmm. can increase it. If times are bad, well, mm -hmm. we all suffer together a little bit. Yeah. That's the great. I, I do feel that that sets the objective, though, that if you start saying, like, well, we'll take away one person here and 0.5, like, your objective is not clear. Either it is not a tax, like, we're not a municipality that has tax exemptions and we are scaling them back. Or we are kind of scaling them back, and maybe for some people. And like, I would, I would prefer to have a strong um, <coughs> directive mm -hmm. from from the community and the council about what we're deciding, and, and move decisively in that direction, and do one thing really well. I'm sorry. Who is that? Mm -hmm. Councillor Anderson. Um, I, I agree with Councillor McQuaid. And then another possibility of rather maybe not scaling back, but setting a cap and sticking to it, so that as more and more possibly tax exemptions come on stream, such as affordable housing, then everybody sort of increases, gets to pay some taxes, but not necessarily all or nothing or working towards nothing. So that might be a, another way of approaching it is to set a target cap and, and really stick to it. And so the hit wouldn't be so hard, I, th I think, and, and would be, yeah. So you, when you say cap, you take, are you talking percentage or a dollar cap? It would, I think a percentage would be something best to stick to. Currently using the percentage is, means that the limit will increase year after year as taxes increase year after year. So a dollar amount is also common and, and just fine to use as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. With what you showed us earlier though, even at the 2%, we would start going over it, right? Or yes, project, using the information the we have available, yes, which will look a bit different once the 2020 rates are drafted. The reason I like okay. a, a dollar amount cap is people then know what they might actually be paying. Mm -hmm. Whereas when it's a percentage, they don't really know until we've yeah. got all the mm -hmm. assessments and things like that. Sorry to interject. Uh, can, can I just encourage the councillors uh, just to speak up a little bit? Uh, I'm missing, missing um, some of the ends of sentences and, uh, and words. Well, I'm sorry, Dan, we're trying, but if you're not here, we can't cater for just one person. So. No, I, I, most of the time it's good, but some of the, sometimes the, the, the voice is going to fade off and I, I can't quite uh, catch it. Councillor Law, we, we are fairly well almost yelling at each other here, so I would encourage oh, you really? to maybe watch the YouTube video after to catch up on anything that you had missed, but... Yeah. But we, we are doing our, our level best to make it loud for you in here. I, I heard that perfectly clear. It's my stage voice. <coughs> okay, moving on. 
Have you got enough Nyla now? Or? I do. I would still like to see who doesn't who doesn't give extensions and if there's any okay. common theme as to why they don't. I'll do my best to get yeah, that information. Know, that may be a hard, hard <laughs> thing to track down, but I'll do my best. <laughs> and I don't want to just hear, well, you clue it, does it? Because we often compare ourselves to you clue it. I don't think we should always be doing that. No, but I do think the resort municipalities are good to look at yeah. because yeah. they're, yeah, they're of about the same size. They're offering many of the same that. services and products. And yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. I'll do that. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Any more comments before Nala steps down? Great, thanks, Nala. And then steps back up. Come. <laughs> okay, now we've got the budget consultation summary. Okay, so this is a uh, brief presentation on the feedback that we received from the open house that was held on February 18th. We had a special budget meeting on January 31st, and so the information that was presented at that meeting was available at the consultation on the 18th. We requested feedback in person through the online form, uh, as well as we, have, we continue to have the budget at tofino.ca email available, and we'll have that available throughout the year for any comments. So the deadline to submit feedback on the content that was specifically presented at the February 18th and January 31st meeting was March 6th. And so today is a compilation of the feedback that we received. So we had 17 attendees at this open house compared to 70, the first open house that we held in December. We received two feedback forms and we To extend the conference for 15 minutes, press one. And we received seven emails. So I'll do something similar to what I did last time, is just go through the different categories of questions that we asked in the feedback forms and on the presentation slides. And we've inserted the type of feedback we received. And then at the end, there's some general feedback that I'll, I will also present. So first we asked whether uh, the community wanted a more user-friendly website and we received similar feedback to the, the first open house on this one and that it was a more or less an even split, split between yes and no. Those in favor would like to see a better search function and a more user and more user-friendly features. And those that opposed it con were concerned that 30,000 was too high and wanted to make sure that we would be considering multiple, multiple bids and we certainly will be. Did you get any ideas? from the feedback if those people actually use the website. I suspect the ones that said they wanted a more user friendly uh, do look at the website, whereas the no's would just be a no. I'm not sure. Yeah. Not sure. <laughs> okay. So for bylaw ser services, we asked the question, do you support the municipality increasing revenue by introducing pay parking? and if so, in which location. So we received quite a bit of feedback on, on this topic. Most comments were generally, generally in support of the idea. Um, someone suggested they should be a high-tech system, um, likely easy to pay, um, free and low cost for local residents and taxpayers, and some wanted it seasonal rather than year-round, um, and establishments could charge uh, for visitor parking, similar to the hostel, hostel, and then there were some possible locations that were suggested only in the downtown, keep the beaches free, community hall, Gibson Street by the school, and um, the community was not interested in any trees coming down as a result of adding more parking. <laughs> Oh, and I do just have a note here that three out of the 13 comments received on this topic said they were not in support, but uh, most of the comments were in support. Indoor recreation facility, we did ask again if the grant was denied what um, the community felt the next step should be. Um, some questioned whether the project was necessary, um, suggested we cancel it, and some were interested in not having any trees cut down. Um, 
and some felt it was dependent on what the facility would offer and that we should be asking for private donations and perhaps make the current facility more user friendly and multiple responses suggested that we continue to and work with the school district to use the school gym promote a, promote a more outdoor education and allow roller skating in the in the gym or make it a swimming pool and a sauna <laughs> arts culture and heritage we received some comments at the last open house that we weren't providing enough programming for arts, culture, and heritage, so we wanted to take the opportunity at this open house to ex or to demonstrate what we are providing. Um, we, we did ask the question, what cultural programs and projects would you like to see in the community? Um, we heard back um, Poet Laureate, Laureate, New Theater, Better li Library, and Allowing Buskers. Museum, large archives, archive space, sustainable living programs, edible local plants, and opportunities to integrate between First Nation communities and Tofino. We did ask what the community's priorities were for improving the multi-use path and uh, received many supportive comments for this, these projects and improvements over the next five years. Um, sea otter to beaches and beaches to sandpiper, uh, the community felt needed to be, were high priority and needed to be improved, and as well as a section in front of um, Tofino Resort Marina, because there's no clear biking trail and ca cars often pull off into the bike lane, bike lane and park, and complete the trail um, through town along Campbell Street. And then we received some general feedback, um, some comments with respect to saving trees and looking after our parks and gardens better, making Tofino a more progressive community with regards to addressing climate change and that we need to be proactive in that regard, put money into creating a Tofino Airbnb app and have a free summer life-saving courses for kids and create more bicycle parking community hall improvements, install a quieter fan, thinking of noise pollution, um, as it impacts the forests. Some other topics on environmental sensitive areas report, um, cap growth and protect DL114. Road paving priorities, we received some comments regarding do not pave Arnett Road unless um, the trees will remain. And for Mackenzie Beach Road, that comment for um, $400,000 to provide road for a couple of businesses felt tourist-based to some community members, um, even if the trade-off is to receive public asset access. On Olson Road Storm Main, there was some concern whether the storm water would pollute the ocean and improvements to the water system. There is a comment to cap growth again, um, water catchment only, and to reinstate incentives. I'm guessing that's with respect to water conservation. Duty officer vehicle, um, the, those that did comment on the vehicle felt it was a priority. For firemen. Just firemen. Yeah. I had to say that a lot. <laughs> Thank you. That was good. Wastewater treatment plant. Um, community members are concerned about tree loss and who who is going to pay for what. And resi felt as though residents shouldn't pay um, for most of the water and the sewer infrastructure. And some members were interested in seeing more balance system created to ensure the, the burden of the wastewater treatment plant to be paid for equitably. And we will have more information on that as the costs become a bit higher. Campbell Street Phase 3. Community members were concerned about the rural character and consider wooden bench tops with less, thic less thickness than the current ones. Akmoxis generator, the cost seemed high. Housing needs assessment, also the cost seemed high. So that concludes my summary on the budget feedback, and I'm happy to answer any questions or receive any comments regarding the consultation session, the two that we have. Okay.
Thanks. I it, I think it's great that we did two, and I think that's the new minimum standard for future years. Okay. I think having the first one back in December um, brought out obviously a lot of people who had questions and wanted to see the material. I. I take it as a good sign that less people came the second time because they're either resigned or resolved or had had their questions answered. At least it doesn't mean that people are happier necessarily, but um, I think that people were, um, uh, you know, generally happy that the, the municipality stepped up the game this year and, and I think you and your staff did a really excellent job of preparing us and, and thank you for that. I think um, I you know, whenever I read feedback like this, I'm always thinking that like 13 people replied and I'm thankful to each one of those 13 people. And they are 13 people. And there are, you know, I don't know, another 2,300 people or something like that living in the town whose opinions matter to me as well. And um, there's lots of reasons why they don't, aren't able to get out or give feedback in this way. And I'm thinking of their needs and interests too when I make decisions at the budget table. So, thanks. Um, well, I, I would echo that I think the presentations were great this year and uh, the, the format worked really well. I wish we got better turnout at the second one, but everybody that come is appreciated in all those voices. Um, I, I was a little surprised to hear that there's more support for parking now than pay parking than there has been in the past. And I'm I guess my, uh, to go, <laughs> go into a specific comment, I think that um, Mackenzie Beach Road is, <coughs> it's not everybody in Tofino paying for it any more than the taxpayers that are already on Mackenzie Beach paying for it, who have been paying taxes for a long time to have a not great road. And uh, also I, I think we're going to see increased taxation coming out of the Mackenzie Road area as improvements happen down there. So there's uh, there's certainly an argument that the people on Mackenzie Beach Road are contributing to the tax base, and that is contributing to the road. And I think they deserve a good road as much as anyone else that has a good road. So to go into a specific thing, maybe too far, I would say that. Um, and then the other thing on the, was on the feedback on the website, I think it would have been good to know how people are accessing our website because I think there's some specific difficulties to access it with the phone, which more and more people are using to access websites now. So I, I would have been nice to know what, what method people were using when they made comments on that. Um, so, yeah, and I, I like, again, I really like the format and I like the better interaction with counselors and the public. Mr. Stitt? Uh, what Mayor Osborne said, and I would just add one, um, one further is that I think part of the value of, the, of this process is, is the added transparency um, that comes from this process. And, and I think it, it adds, uh, tremendous amount of value to the trust and confidence in municipal governance that uh, that we go through this process and so I was uh, I was very uh, thankful for the staff's time and effort in, in making that possible. Okay. Councilor Chalmers, do you have anything to say? No, I don't have anything. Thank you for the report, Nyla. Okay. Councilor Law? No, thanks. Uh, thanks for the report. Well, I'll echo what everybody else said. I thought it was a good format. Uh, disappointing in the attendance. Um, I don't think there's any perfect day to hold these things, but I don't think the day after a long weekend is a, is a good day. So I think people getting back from a weekend, they're trying to sort the kids out and things like this. So I would encourage us to avoid those days in particular in the future. But otherwise, I thought it was good. And uh, when, any idea when we will be discussing parking? I don't know that, no. Um, mm. Like what a, what a parking plan will look like. Mm. Um, all, what we're doing this year is uh, proposing to council that we budget $20,000 to get some expertise to look at, at, um, at our parking system and, and what the possibilities might be. 
Uh, so if that amount is approved in this year's budget, then that study would happen and it's probably late, late, late in this year. Um, schedules are up in the air right now. Okay. Any further comments or questions? Uh, no questions from the public. No motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. All those in favour? Motion carried. Over to you, boss. Nah. Please stay on the, remain on the line. Right? <laughs> okay. Um, now,